Hello, Giuseppe here. We're back again, and this time we're going to cover making a drop shadow. Uh, if you notice the picture we're going to use to insert a person and their shadow, uh, it must have been either early in the morning or late in the evening because you can tell the shadows are horizontal so the sun was quite low and that's what we need to keep in mind as we go ahead and work with our drop shadow. We're going to put this person in and we'll assume from this point that the user has knowledge and has already experienced being able to surround a subject and select it and put it on a transparent background. This will be material for another video. This particular video is just about the shadow. So obviously we're going to need more room on the left of this character. And to do that we have to enlarge the canvas. So we go up here to the top and choose image, resize, resize canvas. Alright, this brings up the dimensions which is a little over 9 by 12 and we want the width increased quite a bit. Uh, let's maybe go with uh, 25 inches there and just so that we have plenty of room to play around we'll go 20 inches on the height. This will give us plenty of canvas. If we click OK you see the canvas size has enlarged quite a bit we can always crop just the area we want if need be. Take the move tool over here, click on this guy and move him over out of the way for right now. Okay, our next step is to add another layer. So we'll go over in the layers panel and go up to the top and that sheet on the left there that has the folded corner we'll add a new layer. Let's create a new layer so we left click on that and we've done that. Okay, now we're gonna hold the control key down as we press the left clicker on the mouse down both at the same time and then release both. And you may have noticed uh, outline has developed around the image here. It was very easy for Photoshop elements to select that because there's no background at all and it has a bounding box there you can see. Okay, next step we want to hide the image temporarily so we're going to click on the eye over here in the layers panel of layer 1. When we do that the image goes away, we're not seeing it but we see the outline of the marching ants still visible. Alright, Next step, we're going clear over to the tools again, making sure that our color boxes are set to black and white with black on top. And then we'll go up to the paint bucket, select that, go back over inside that dotted line of the image, left click, and we have a black image here that we're going to create into our shadow. Now we need to start manipulating the shadow. So we'll go to the top over here to image and we want to transform the shadow so we'll go down to transform and the first action we'll take is to go to perspective. Most shadows as they fall away from the origin grow a little bit narrower at the top so we're going to just microscopically move the left button on this just a little bit in to make the top a little more narrow than the bottom of the shadow. And we can click OK when we hit the green arrow. Alright, this time we're going to go back over to the top again to image and transform again. But this time we're going to distort. Instead of choosing the left button here, we're going to the center button, not the left or the right, but the center. And get right on that little button, click it, and as we move down, we can move left at the same time, distorting the shadow to the position 
that we want it in. Make it as long as we want to and as low as we want to. Alright, going just about horizontal because that's how that uh, light was striking our image that we're going to move this into. Alright, with that done I release the left clicker and hit the green arrow to accept. It originates from over here in the lower right corner. That's important that we remember the position of that. So it goes from the lower right corner to the left. Now we're going to go up to the filter up here and radial blur is one of the options there. And we're going to go to blur and choose radial blur down here. Now the radial blur works radial meaning circular it works in a circle and radial radiates as if you will uh, as it makes the shadow here but this particular setup in Photoshop Elements works a little strange so we had to locate the shadow in the lower right corner alright now this shadow works if we click right in the center and move it to that same position as the shadow is. So moving it down to the lower right corner, release the left clicker and it's there. Now the density is decided by the number up here. 10 is too high. We're going to start with a very low number, maybe 2, and see what that does. And we'll choose best here for quality. Hit the OK and see what the effect is. Now you can notice where the shadow is faded out quite a bit. So we'll go from there. This will probably make the shadow possibly a little lighter than the others. Maybe not, but we'll go assuming that's pretty good to the next step. Now we can adjust the opacity over here in the layers panel. It's a hundred percent right now. I'm going to double click on that and I don't know, go very little because there's already some opacity there. Maybe 98%. We'll try that. That made a little more opacity, but we don't need a whole lot because those shadows were pretty strong. And we'll hit enter and go from there. Now there are further adjustments that we can do. I don't think this shadow needs it, but uh, in case another episode where the shadow might require it, I'll go through the steps anyway. It's uh, called the, the Gaussian Blur and again we go up to Filter and Blur and down to Gaussian Blur. What this does is put a little more emphasis on the fade on the edge and makes the image overall a little bit more blurred. We're going to cancel this but otherwise you would adjust the strength by this number here and you can see the results here on the edges already where it's uh, faded more from the center. I will cancel that and the other one that we could have done is to use uh, a gradient tool and to do that over here on the left where the tools are just opposite the paint bucket is the gradient tool and if we click on that the principle behind that is to fade from white to black or black to white. Down here in the lower left corner you'll notice it brought this up and this is the third option here, the black to white. It defaults to that and we'll hit OK. Now to use that you would click anywhere on the image. Well let me try it and maybe we can undo it again but you have to experiment with where you're doing this when you let go. Now you can see how it gra gradually faded more on that uh, shadow as it extended. I'm going to hit the undo feature because we don't really need that with this shadow. And again, that's the gradient tool which some uh, shadows will require. Okay, now we're going back over to the uh, layer panel in order to show the shadow behind the subject 
we need to drag this layer 2 down below layer 1 and there the shadow goes behind the image. Uh, this gives you a little understanding of how layers work. We had the shadow above the image of the person and what we look at here is the shadow was above the, the uh, cross right across the image. When I drug the shadow layer down below layer 1 it went behind the image. So this gives you a little better understanding here that layers work pretty much like that. This top layer is above layer 2 the shadow and that's how it appears in the image. The image of the person is above the shadow there. Alright, we'll do a little test view here by looking into our photo bin bringing up our image and check it out by dragging the image with the transparent background up here to see how it works. Obviously that's pretty big. As you can see there's a bounding box around here and if we use the left button here, click on that, shrink it down to the size we want, it reduces both the shadow and the person. I don't know, that's pretty close right there I think. And if you get where you think it should be right, uh, you can click the green arrow. This could also be used to change the color temperature uh, like a filter would be over your lens. Uh, if the sun was a little warmer like it would be in the evening many times, you can go up here to filter and adjustments and this usually because our image is not finalized brings out the option to choose a filter. I'll try to show that after we OK the image here. If that's where we want it we click the green arrow to accept the change and there we have the person in the shadow and the shadows match pretty close. They're a little horizontal like the tree shadows back here and again the uh, filter with adjustment with a photo filter. But now we can see the uh, effect. It brings up automatically the first option is a warming filter 85 which affects the uh, color temperature and gives it a little warmer effect. I think basically we've covered pretty much what you might be interested in learning to make a shadow. Uh, it can work with any image that you cut out and obviously when you're done at this stage you can click uh, to get rid of the bounding box, analyze it if that's the way you like it, go ahead and save it. You can save it as a PSD if you want to work on it later again or a JPEG or uh, any format of your choice. So I think we'll terminate this one and uh, maybe in the next or upcoming video cover some of the uh, selection and cutting out of an object. Just in case that knee that abruptly ended <laughs> at the edge of the picture was bothering you, I did a little photographic surgery and we gave the fella a knee here. So rest easy, he's okay. All right, with that, we'll sign off and hopefully next time get together again. Thank you. This is Giuseppe. So long.